<laughs> I enjoy Tozer. I uh, think at times that we take for granted so much about our salvation that we need to be reminded that there was a price to pay for the early disciples as well as for us. That we need to count the cost and recognize that there's more to Christianity than sucking our thumb and sitting on our hands and sometimes just getting away with bad attitudes and worse actions. Sometimes we need to humble ourselves and pray and ask God to forgive us for the kind of sinner that we are. God's true prophets never applied for the job. That can't be said for today. You know, even without having to read Tozer, I think of all those people who put the name prophet in front of themselves and how they will stand before God and answer. And you know, as much as they aggravate me to no end when I read them on the internet or I hear the words they claim to pray or say in the name of the Lord, I still have a concept that what a travesty and tragedy it would be to stand before Jesus and have him say, I never knew you, depart from me. And as much as they irritate me, that's not something I want for them. But there are times when I really wish, without offending them, that they would just shut up. And that shows you where I'm at. <laughs> Sometimes I just wish anybody that claims to be a prophet of the Lord would just shut up. And Moses said unto God, Who am I that I should go into Pharaoh, and that I should bring forth the children of Israel out of Egypt? Exodus 3.11 the true minister of the gospel is one not by his own choice, but by the sovereign commission of God. God chose him. He didn't choose God. From a study of the scriptures, one might conclude that the man God calls seldom or never surrenders to the call without considerable reluctance. The young man who rushes too eagerly into the pulpit at first glance seems to be unusually spiritual but he may in fact only be revealing his lack of understanding of the sacred nature of the ministry. The call of God comes with an insistence that he will not be denied and can scarcely be resisted. Moses fought his call strenuously and lost to the compulsion of the spirit within him. And the same may be said of many others in the Bible and since Bible times. Christian biography shows that many who later became great Christian leaders at first tried earnestly to avoid the burden of the ministry, but I cannot offhand recall one single instance of a prophet having applied for the job. The call to witness and serve God comes to every Christian. The call to be a voice to mankind comes only to the man who has the Spirit's gift and special enabling. We need not fewer men to show mercy, but we need more men who could hear the words of God and translate them into human speech. You know, when Paul said, despise not prophesying, unfortunately, we wound up with prophetesses, prophets, people running around, taking this authority they think they have, and operating without ever once recognizing the validity of the responsibility that God has called each and every person to give an account for every single word that they speak. And whenever I run into a prophet on the internet, the most fascinating thing to me is that I'm the one telling them to talk about Jesus. I'm the one that's saying anyone can hear God speak. I'm the one challenging them to say, look, only share those things that are scriptural not what you think they mean and not what doesn't come from the Bible. That if you try to make up stuff and say God said it and then have it be contradictory to the Word of God, then you're not sharing what God said. You're speaking hastily and you are in serious issue with God. And the only thing I ever hear an answer for in those things, in those occasions when they say that is that well, God can say anything he wants, and so he does. God, God can't be understood, so he speaks to his prophets and tells us what to say to people. No, 
everyone can understand whether it comes from the Lord or whether it doesn't because we are all given the knowledge of the Word of God that Jesus said this, My sheep hear my voice and they know me. They will not follow the voice of another. If a prophet come and speak any other word than that which is written in Scripture, then he is not a prophet of God and he is not sent by Jesus Christ himself. So at any time, if anyone in any way, shape or form, whether in this devotional, these devotionals, your pastor, your teacher, your prophet, your elder, your deacon, or any other person, whether above or below, comes to you and shares any other gospel than that which is written in the word of God that Jesus Christ himself testifies for, that he is not from God. That is what frustrates me. Now, aren't you glad you know? <laughs> And as Paul said, but of you I have no fear, for you know the word of the Lord, and you know his word, and you have studied, and you apply it. And yet, in my culture and society that I live in, I see more people deceived than I see walking and talking and listening to Jesus daily. And I wish I could say that makes me mad, but it just breaks my heart. And like Jesus sitting on the mountaintop outside of Jerusalem, weeping, how he longs to hold you in the palm of his hand and speak comforting words to you of peace and of an expected end. Follow Jesus. There's no one else to follow me. Just follow Jesus.